If you've ever been to the Delaware beaches, you know that it doesn't take long to see why so many people are drawn to the area. The scenery, the atmosphere and recreation, and the history are just a few examples of why so many people flock to the Delaware beaches regularly. But if you have been to the Delaware beaches, I'm sure you've noticed these strange towers that stick up out of the landscape. But once you look into the history of these towers and what they're originally for, well, you gain even more appreciation for the First State's coastal area. From 1939 to 1942, there were 11 concrete observation towers built by the United States Army in the state of Delaware. The idea was to protect the Delaware Bay with major ports and cities like Baltimore and Philadelphia. During World War II, this was definitely a high-risk area as far as attack from the Germans. There's 11 total towers ranging from 39 feet to 75 feet tall, diameter of 16 feet, and walls are one foot thick concrete. The towers start with Tower 1 in South Bethany and Tower 2 just south of the Indian River Inlet Bridge. These two towers are shorter than the others at about 40 feet. Bethany Beach is what I call Delaware's quiet beach. It's a lot more calm in Bethany. There's less crowds, there's less commercialization. There's just a little slower lifestyle in Bethany. And I love Bethany for that reason. The idea was to have soldiers scouting the ocean and looking for enemy ships as well as submarines. With towers placed in multiple locations, they could use simple geometry and trig to figure out exactly where they should fire should they see an enemy boat. Luckily, we never witnessed any enemy action in this area. Towers generally fall outside of residential areas. However, North Bethany has expanded almost all the way to the Indian River Inlet Bridge, which brings residential areas right into the backyard of Tower 2. Since the towers were only designed to last 20 years, most of them are showing signs of their age. Minor repairs have been done to try to make sure that the towers don't have any structural problems. There's been an ongoing fundraising operation to restore Tower 3, and I think that they want to restore it in such a way that people can go up to the top of Tower 3 and get a view of what our soldiers would have seen. Standing guard would have been pretty boring, to be honest with you. They would have been using different optics to just look out into the sea looking for trouble. If they were to find any trouble, they would have radioed it to another tower so that they could triangulate the position of whatever it is they had a concern about. They've been fundraising to restore Tower 3 for many years, and they finally have gotten started in restoring the tower. If you look close, you can see some of the repairs they've done to Tower 3. They've done fundraising for years trying to get enough money to go ahead with this project and they finally did and, and it's nice to see some of the repairs. Originally I think the soldiers uh, they used like a rope ladder or something to get up to the top but they're going to convert this one to have stairs so that the general public can go and check it out. I think most people agree there should be no alteration in the original design concept when doing the restoration of any of the towers. Although Tower 3 is the one that's currently under repair most of them could benefit from some type of upgrade, repairs, or patching. Towers 3 and 4 are located south of Dewey Beach, and you can literally see one from the other while standing on the ground. One of the towers stands in Delaware Seashore State Park, and the other one stands on Towers Road. Even if you're unfamiliar with the Delaware beaches, most people have heard of Dewey Beach, the absolute party king of the Delaware beaches. Okay. 
You have to remember, the point of the towers were to alert us if we saw any enemy submarines or ships off the coast. So the more towers that we had along the coast, the better the triangulation we could do to figure out exactly where the enemy ship or submarine is. That way we could point the big guns that we had mounted on the coast at the ships and destroy the threat. They chose the location of the towers so they could use math to uh, triangulate where a ship might be if they spot one out in the ocean that way they could get you know more exact coordinates so that if they needed to destroy it or shoot it or whatever that they had a precise location on on where it is even if you haven't been to delaware or the delaware beaches you've probably heard of rehoboth beach delaware rehoboth is definitely our most popular beach town Arguably, it has the best beaches, the most restaurants, the most shopping, and ultimately just the best beachy atmosphere. But on the northern side of Rehoboth Beach at Gordon Pond State Park sit two towers right on the beach. In fact, they're so close to the water that during high tides at times, the waves crash against the towers. And unfortunately, this means that the lifespan of these towers is probably coming to an end soon if action isn't taken to prevent any more damage or save them. While the towers are located all up and down the coast of Delaware, the main part of it all is right in Lewis, Delaware, the Cape and Lopen State Park, specifically Fort Miles. Fort Miles was constructed long before World War II. Fort Miles actually had two guns on site for World War I. In 1924, the fort had four 12-inch guns of long-range carriages. But with the outbreak of war in Europe in 1939 and the fall of France in 1940, the U.S. started accelerating their defense plans. And since this area was so critical, on July 27, 1940, the Army's Harbor Defense Board recommended the construction of 27 16-inch two-gun batteries all along the East Coast in order to protect strategic points. This would protect against air attacks as well as sea attacks from ships or even submarines. Construction on the first one, called Battery 118, later named Battery Smith, began on March 24, 1941. The first operational guns were four six-inch guns, which were deployed on April 15, 1941. With the attack of Pearl Harbor, it accelerated the urge to get the coast protected, both on the Pacific and on the Atlantic side. The war came to a close, and the larger guns were canceled. At the peak, there was over 2,200 soldiers, both men and women, stationed at the fort. Luckily, Fort Miles never had to see any active war during World War II. However, there was lots of testing of different methods and weapons. There was a lot of strategy building and a lot of defenses built that left a lot of very odd-looking things sticking out of the landscape at the Cape and Lopen State Park, where Fort Miles is. To this day, you can drive through the park and see all kinds of strange stuff sticking up out of the ground or in the side of a dune. There were several barracks built to accommodate the soldiers. There's also administrative buildings and all kinds of other support buildings that still remain today. Several of the guns are still on display and you can go right up to them and get a great look at them. So next time you're at the park, I encourage you to keep your eyes open. There's all kinds of strange little things that if you're not looking for them, you may not notice. Some of them are very obvious, but some of them are very subtle. But you can tell that this place has a very deep history. At its peak, the fort housed 2,200 soldiers, both men and women. Ultimately, the fort turned into almost like a retreat spot or a vacation spot for active soldiers. Since the Cape area was so beautiful and so nice and relaxing, that's where they would go to take some time off.
The towers were a big part of the defense plan of our East Coast and the United States during World War II. Without advance notice, we'd have been very susceptible to an attack. Inside of Cabin Lopen State Park, there's several towers, but Tower 7 that has a spiral staircase and it goes all the way to the top of the 75 foot tower with an observation deck on the very top. It's some of the best views in the area. Now this is not what it would have looked like in here when these towers were constructed. The soldiers would probably have some type of ladder right here in the middle that took them up to the low deck. Once they got up there, they could go between decks. I'm sure each tower had a, a, you know, at least a couple decks, and including the top of the tower. I think it's really cool they put the stairs in here. Uh, I think that they're adding stairs to uh, tower three or four back in Dewey, and maybe that'll allow us to get a pretty cool perspective from on top of the tower there once they uh, once they get it rehabbed. Let's go ahead and go up these stairs and see what we can see. This is probably about where the first deck would have been. In fact, you can kind of see it. Because this is where the, I don't know what you want to call them, but you know, the holes so that you can uh, see what's going on outside so they can keep uh, watch. And uh, you can see that they've taken the floor out of here of what used to be here. I think one of the reasons I enjoy doing these types of videos so much is what I learned. There's so much history behind all the places that we live. Far too often we get lost in the busyness of our daily lives and you know, we forget that there was so much history that came before us right in the same places that were located. It's good to reflect on it. It's good to remember it. It's good to appreciate it. It allows you to move forward with a respect for those that came before you, a respect for the magnitude of the landscapes you're looking at, and ultimately it just makes you a better you. Thank you.